Hey, and welcome back to Wind Chemistry. Today I'm going to go over Lewis dot structures, which will allow you to understand how electrons are shared in a covalent compound. It takes a little bit of puzzle solving and creativity, but by the end of it all, you're going to have a much better understanding of covalent compounds and their structures. Drawing a Lewis dot structure is a lot like drawing a two-dimensional picture of what the molecule looks like. You're going to see how the atoms and elements are connected to each other and how the electrons are shared and where the lone pairs go on which elements. I'll just lay down a few ground rules before we actually start doing these as examples. So there are five basic rules that you want to follow when you're drawing Lewis dot structures, and that is for the first rule, you want to find the valence electron total. So if you're doing water, you would have eight valence electrons. You want to find out what the central atom is, and usually it's the lone element that's in the formula or the most electronegative. Sometimes you just have to use your best judgment to create the most symmetrical structure. And the third rule is you want to satisfy two conditions. So condition A is you want to use up all eight valence electrons in water. And then condition B is you want to make sure each atom has eight dots. And they can share these dots in many different ways. You can single bond them, double bond them, triple bond them, do whatever it takes. And the other uh, few rules at the bottom, four and five, I kind of explained already. But um, if you want to clean up your structure a bit, like how that Lewis dot structure for water looks, you can actually use solid lines to represent bonded pairs of electrons. So all of that I'll explain. I'm just laying down some ground rules before we actually start. The Lewis dot structure for carbon tetrachloride, let's start with the formula. It's CCl4. Let's count the number of valence electrons each element contributes to the structures. So carbon has four, chlorine has seven, and there's four of them. When you add them all up, you get 32 electrons. So this structure should have a total of 32 dots in it. The central atom will be carbon because he is the leading element, or he's the lone element in this formula. So I will put carbon right at the center when I draw the Lewis dot structure and I will surround it with four chlorines. Just make sure they're evenly spaced out and it looks symmetrical. And now I will place eight dots on carbon, and that's how it bonds with each of the chlorines. So far we've used eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 dots, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So we've got 32 dots all used up. So we've satisfied that first condition. And the second condition is making sure each atom has eight dots. So this carbon has eight in the center. This chlorine over here also has eight surrounding him. The chlorine in the three o'clock position has eight. This guy has eight electrons. And this guy to the bottom, this chlorine has eight electrons. So they each have eight dots. But then you ask yourself, wait, isn't that eight times five makes 40? Like, so that means we've gone over 32, correct? I don't have a good feeling about this. But actually, once you think about it, eight of those electrons are being shared, which I'll fill in again with orange. So you could see that the carbon is sharing eight electrons with each of the chlorines. So I will subtract eight, which are being shared, and that brings us back down to 32. So again, we've satisfied the two conditions, which is use up all 32 valence electrons, and we've made sure that each atom has eight electrons or eight dots surrounding it. Another way you can draw this Lewis dot structure is to replace the eight dots surrounding carbon with four lines because a line represents two electrons and you could do this when the electrons are being shared with a different element. But keep in mind that the electrons on chlorine, the lone pairs, have to remain as dots. You can't use lines for those guys. So the ones that I'm drawing in red right there have to be dots. But the, the bonded electrons can be represented as lines, and you can see there it's still 2, 4, 6, 8 surrounding our carbon. And just to make it clear, I'll circle that. So only those eight electrons 
can be redrawn as lines. Silicon tetrahydride is SiH4. And we're going to go ahead and count the valence electrons. So silicon has four. And we're going to add that to each of the hydrogens. So hydrogen has one, and there's four of them. So in total, we have eight electrons, or eight dots, that we're going to play with. Okay, so this structure should have a total of eight electrons in it. My central atom will be silicon because it is the leading element and it's also the only one. So in order to make this structure look symmetrical, I have to put silicon in the center and it will be surrounded by four hydrogens. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start placing dots so that it bonds the silicon to each of the four hydrogens. And it turns out I've already used eight dots. So that satisfies the first condition. And then does each element have eight dots? Well, silicon obviously has eight surrounding it, so he's fine. But the hydrogens is, well, they're exceptions to the octet rule. So hydrogen needs just two electrons. And another way I can represent this Lewis dot structure is replacing the dots with solid lines. And remember, I can only use solid lines when they are bonded or shared pairs of electrons. Phosphorus trihydride is pH3. Phosphorus contributes five electrons. Hydrogen contributes one, and there's three of them. So I'm going to go one times three plus five, which again gives me eight electrons. And you can think of it as eight dots that have to appear somewhere in this structure. My central atom will be phosphorus because he's the leading element or the lone one. So again, it's all about trying to make this structure look as balanced and symmetrical as possible. So I would choose to place the H's like that. Okay, so it looks nice and even. Um, you can also, you know, move the H's around. If you choose to, you can put the H in the six o'clock position, that's fine. And I'm gonna draw three lines connecting them and then a lone pair, so two dots. So have I used up all eight valence electrons? I have, okay, you can count the structure for yourself. And then each atom has eight dots. The phosphorus definitely has eight. Three lines and two dots make eight. And each of the hydrogens have two electrons. Okay, so again, hydrogen is an exception. It does not need eight in the structure. It needs just two. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and erase that and just show you how I can, you know, place my H's like this, right? So as long as it looks symmetrical, I'm fine with the structure here too. Okay, I can choose to use all dots. I could choose to go lines where they're bonded, but that lone pair on phosphorus has to be two dots. You see in the six o'clock position there, those have to be dots because it's not bonded to anything. Ammonium is NH4 with a plus one charge. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, and there's four of them. The plus one charge means that it has lost one electron. So I'm gonna take one away from the total, leaving me with eight dots or eight valence electrons, which I'll have to place in the structure. I'm gonna put nitrogen as the central atom right in the middle. And I'm gonna surround it with four hydrogens and we're gonna bond those hydrogens with a pair of electrons each. So we've got two, four, six, eight. I've used up all of the valence electrons and then each atom has eight dots. So this nitrogen has eight and hydrogen, remember, needs just two electrons. So we've satisfied the second condition of the Lewis dot structure. I can redraw it using lines and I can leave it just like that. So that is the Lewis dot structure for ammonium, NH4. I would do hydroxide in this one. Hydroxide is a polyatomic. The formula is OH with a negative one charge. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Hydrogen has one. The negative one means that this has gained one electron, so I will add in one. It seems backwards. A lot of chemistry seems backwards. But when I add them all up, I get eight electrons or eight dots that I'm supposed to play with in this structure. For the central atom, 
This is not applicable because there is no center if all you have is two elements. So we have just O and H. So when you draw the structure, just place them right next to each other. I'm going to place OH like that. And I will bond oxygen and hydrogen with a pair of electrons. So these two electrons are shared. Because hydrogen can hold just two electrons, I have to place the remaining six on oxygen. So in total, we've used up eight dots. I've used up all of my valence electrons. That satisfies the first condition. And the second condition has also been satisfied because each atom has eight dots. And remember, hydrogen needs just two. I can clean up the structure a bit. I can replace the bonded shared electrons with a line. But the lone pairs have to remain as dots. So this is also a valid structure for OH for hydroxide, and you can just leave it as is. Phosphate is yet another polyatomic. It ends in ATE, so you can find it on that common polyatomics table. It's got the formula PO4. So phosphorus contributes five valence electrons. We're going to add this to oxygen. Oxygen has six, and there's four of them, so we're going to multiply those numbers. And then that three negative means that it has gained three electrons, so we're going to add in three more, add them all up. We're going to get 32 electrons, or 32 dots, that we're supposed to play with in this structure. The central atom, I will place phosphorus in the center, right in the middle. And I will surround my phosphorus with four oxygens. I'm going to connect the oxygens to the phosphorus. So that's already 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. So I have now satisfied the first condition, which is use up all 32 valence electrons. And now I will make sure each atom has eight dots around it. This phosphorus looks good. It's got eight dots or eight electrons. And each of the four oxygens has eight electrons around it. So I would just circle it. You can see how that looks. So oxygen has eight dots all around. And this seems like it satisfies the second condition, which is each atom has eight dots. So this is a valid Lewis dot structure for phosphate, PO4, 3 negative. Carbon dioxide in this one, and you're going to see that it will need a double bond for the Lewis dot structure. But just like before, count up the valence electrons. Carbon has four. Oxygen contributes six. There are two of them. So it's four plus six times two, which will give you 16 electrons to work with. 16 dots Okay, should go in the structure. The central atom should be carbon because he is the leading element and he is also the lone element in this formula. So I will place carbon in the center surrounded by the two oxygens. And I will now just place 16 dots as best as I can. I'm gonna put the first eight around carbon. So that means I can no longer touch carbon. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's a bit of guess and check. It's kind of like puzzle solving where you got to make sure you're using all 16 valence electrons. So I did that. I satisfied the first condition, but now I got to make sure each atom has eight dots around it. So this oxygen here, it looks like he has eight. That's fine. This carbon also looks like he has eight. So he's okay. And the one on the end here has four dots. So we're running into trouble on this one. So we did not satisfy the second condition of this Lewis dot structure, so it's invalid. We're gonna have to start over and we'll erase this. Okay, so um, when in doubt or when you're in trouble, how about you try a double bond if single bonds don't work? So this is what we'll do. We're gonna go two, four, six, eight. So that is a double bond. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
And now let's count them up. This oxygen has eight electrons. This carbon has eight. And this oxygen also has eight. So this is a valid Lewis dot structure. We've used all 16 dots. We satisfied that first condition. And each atom has eight dots. So this Lewis dot structure works. You can clean this thing up also. Replace the dots with solid lines where they bond. And then just place the lone pairs. And you can leave it just like that for CO2. Nitrogen is a diatomic, so that means in nature, when you encounter nitrogen, it's going to be a bonded pair. Okay, so it's 5 times 2, which gives you 10 electrons to work with. 10 dots once again. The central atom is going to be nitrogen, so actually there is no center. It doesn't apply because there's just two things. You can't have a center, it's just two things. So nitrogen and nitrogen. Let's first try bonding them with a single bond. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. So I have used up 10 dots. I satisfied the first condition, but you're going to see here the second condition is not met because even though this nitrogen has 8, his neighbor, his partner there, only has 4. So I did not satisfy the octet rule. This means this Lewis dot structure does not work. Okay, and I can't just place electrons on that nitrogen there to make things perfect again, okay, because I only have 10 dots to play with. So again, single bonds don't work, try a double bond. So two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. Let's count them up. So this nitrogen is okay. He satisfies the octet rule. He's got eight. His neighbor, however, has just six. So I can't go seven and eight on that nitrogen because that would push me up to 12 valence electrons. So I can't do that. So if a double bond does not work, you need to start over. And now let's try a triple bond. So a triple bond will look like this. Two. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've used up all ten valence electrons. This nitrogen over here has eight. This nitrogen over here also has eight. So keep in mind, okay, even though it looks like you're using sixteen, remember six of them in that Venn diagram right there are being shared. So you are in fact using just ten dots and each nitrogen has eight surrounding it. You can clean it up and you can use the solid lines like we've been showing you. And that is also a valid Lewis dot structure for nitrogen, N2. Methanol, which is a type of alcohol, is CH3OH. And like I've been trying to explain before, it's a bit like puzzle solving. It's like a puzzle game. Okay, where you have to use up all the dots, but make sure each one has eight surrounding it, barring the few exceptions. So, like how we've been doing for the rest, you're going to count up the total number of valence electrons. I think you guys have it down by this point. And it looks to me like we have a total of 14 valence electrons to use in this structure. So this structure should have or contain 14 dots. The central atom is going to be carbon... Okay. You haven't taken organic chemistry yet, but carbon is usually the center because it can make the most bonds and not oxygen. But the first mistake that students will make is they think they can just bond five pairs around carbon. Okay, But that would make 10 electrons, so that means you would fail the second condition where each element can have just eight dots. Okay, So you've gone overboard with that. You can't do that. That's the first mistake. The second mistake would be this. So you go carbon, place the H's all around, and then you connect hydrogen to something else. Well, this would also cause you to fail the second condition because this hydrogen is actually holding four electrons around it, and that is not allowed because hydrogen can hold just two maximum. So again, that's an invalid structure. 
you have to kind of move some of these parts around so that you can satisfy these two conditions here. So now I suggest that you try a different backbone or structure to this one. So start with CH3. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Bond that to oxygen and connect that oxygen to H. Okay, so far we've used up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, you can see the five lines. That leaves us with four electrons to use. And guess where those four will go? One, two, three, four as lone pairs on oxygen. So I have used up all 14 dots, all 14 valence electrons. And now the second condition, each atom should have eight dots around it. This carbon has eight, and this oxygen has eight. So the two big guys in the center have eight, and then just make sure each of the hydrogens are holding just two. Okay, they're allowed just two electrons. So this hydrogen has two, this guy has two, this guy here has two, and that guy there also has just two. So we have met the second condition. Both conditions are satisfied. It's like puzzle solving, and this is a good valid structure for methanol, CH3OH. It's a bit of guess and check. You have to move some of the elements around. You have to move some of the dots around. Use single, use double, use triple bonds if you have to but that's what it takes for Lewis dot structures.